So this is the same three liter bottle you saw earlier. And we've got it full up to the, the line on it. And the hole is hard to see on camera, but it's right here. Right now there's no water coming out um, with the cap on. And since one of the lab questions is to explain that, I'm not gonna tell you why. But think about what Bernoulli's equation, uh, the energy terms would look like on both sides. I think you'll think of why. When we take the cap off, of course the water does come out. And what we're interested in this part of the lab is how far the water goes. And how as the water level drops, that changes the stream. So let's take it off. So you can see at first, it travels relatively far. It's unfortunately a windy day, so that's gonna be a source of error. But as the water level starts to drain, look at what starts happening to the position of the stream, to the horizontal displacement. It definitely starts getting less and less and less. So the goal of this section of the lab is going to be to relate how high above the hole it is to how far the stream is going. So this is probably easiest to see in still photos. Here are the water levels up at the fill line. It's going t between 20 and 21 centimeters. We get down more. It's only going 10 centimeters in this case. And towards the end, it's going a very small distance, only between six and seven centimeters. So it's important we define our variables. How far along the ground, I'm gonna call that horizontal displacement or delta x. The way I set the meter stick in this case is I held my ruler flush against the bottle and put the start of the meter stick right up against the ruler. The other measurement we need to take is the height above the hole. I'm gonna call that H. The last measurement we did to take, I'm gonna call YO, the height of the hole. So there's really two calculations here. There's the Bernoulli's calculation, which involves uh, the height above the hole. But then there's the projectile motion calculation we're using to get speed, which involves uh, between the ground and the hole. So we've measured that already, just like in the previous videos, it's 14.5 centimeters. So here's our data. And the next step is gonna be, we have to convert these horizontal displacements into velocity using projectile motion. Ordinarily what I would have you do is I would have you calculate um, the velocity manually using this displacement data for how far it went. And then I'd have you make the graph by hand because that's an important skill for the AP test and coming up with a best fit line um, from a graph you've drawn by hand is something we really have to practice. I think sort of though this year, given everything that's going on, um, we'd all kind of lose our heads uh, like that guy. So I wanna show you how data analysis would be done typically um, by, by adults. We wouldn't be calculating things by hand and we really wouldn't be using a graphing calculator. We'd be using at the very minimum a spreadsheet and possibly some more complicated uh, program for data analysis. So let's talk about how to use a spreadsheet. Um, I really prefer Google Sheets. Um, because obviously right now we're going between a lot of different devices and I feel like it's the easiest way to do that. Um, LibreOffice is also good. Microsoft Excel is also good. Um, they all work basically the same way. So if you learn how spreadsheet math works on one of them, it'll be fine on all the others too. The only thing that's really different is how do you make graphs. Um, so the first step I sort of feel like is we need to get our measurements for both height of the water above the hole and horizontal displacement, we need to get that into uh, meters because all calculations have to be done with meters. So what I'm gonna do is make a new column. I'm gonna call this H in meters. And obviously what I need to do is I need to divide every one of my centimeters by 100. So since all these calculations are basically the same, it makes no sense to do them individually. So what you do is you tell the spreadsheet to enter a formula and I'm going to type equals. That's what wakes the computer up and tells it you want to do a calculation. And I'm going to click on my first measurement and notice it says cell A2. If I hit enter now, it would just copy A2. 
but I don't want to copy A2, I want it to divide A2 by 100. So, boom, there's my height in centimeters, or excuse me, in meters for the first one. And then this little box here is the ticket. This lets you copy the formula to every other row. So let's do that. Let's get all our heights in meters. Bloop, done. The spreadsheet was really the program that made people adopt personal computers in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, the Apple II running VisiCalc or the TRS-80 running VisiCalc is what made every business start thinking, okay, I don't need to do this by hand anymore. A computer could be a really good thing. So let's do it for Delta X as well. Oops. Sorry, if you're using fancy characters, you got to be careful how you enter them. That'll be in meters as well. Uh, okay, so that would be B2 divided by 100. Done. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to think about what, um, what we're going to do to calculate um, velocity. And then we need to think about how we're going to linearize our graph so that we can uh, make a, a linear, a linear uh, graph that will be able to get us a slope and intercept that can tell us something. So let's talk about velocity first. So velocity is going to be in meters per second. Let's take a look at what we might have to do. So obviously we could solve out these equations with numbers individually for each one. And typically I'd probably make you suffer through that. But I think the easier thing to do is to solve it once to create a formula. And then that formula is something that can be plugged into a spreadsheet. So here's what I mean. All of these, the original height was 14 and a half centimeters or 0.145 meters. If we solve the vertical equation explicitly for time, we're left with a formula. Whatever your time of flight is just depends on uh, the constant acceleration of gravity and then how high it left from. We solve the horizontal equation for VO delta X over T. And that means VO plugging T in from the vertical equation is this. That's a formula we can now put into the spreadsheet. It will look like D2, which is where I have my delta X, divided by the square root of two times YO, which is 0.145, divided by 9.8. And you have to parenthesis the heck out of things so that you don't get it wrong. So let's enter that formula and just make sure it works. So I'm going to do equals D2, so that's our, our X, divided by square root, which you have to type in a, a code for it, which is SQRT. And then to show what's getting square rooted, you do parentheses. Um, in this case, it was uh, a numerator of a fraction, which I'll do parentheses as well, two times Oops, 0.145, close parentheses, divided by 9.8. That's right. So that's my formula. I'll just check it one more time. Looks good to me. Hit enter. Boom, velocity is calculated. So, now we've done that work very simply and spreadsheets are something that you should practice using in this class and you should practice using anytime you can because they're going to be essential for you as an adult. Not even if you just go into science or engineering, this is a great way to not have to do repetitive calculations. Now we got to think of what's going to get us a linear graph. So let's take another look at our math. So we started with Bernoulli's equation we approximate that at the surface of the water, the water's not moving. That's just an approximation, but it's okay for the instant we're looking at things. And we, um, we basically call the zero point for height um, where the hole is. So that simplifies Bernoulli's equation to just the potential energy term equals the kinetic energy term. 
um, density obviously cancels and we're left with um, an equation for V. You actually could have linearized either of these two equations. Um, and I don't really care which you do. They both will give you um, something equivalent. So what I'm going to ask you to, to do, I'm going to linearize this one. And I want you on your own to linearize the other one. And we should get the same answers because we're using the same data. So I wrote V equals the square root of 2GH. I separated out the H part because that's going to be my independent variable. So that's what I'm putting on the X axis. V is what I'm putting on the Y axis. So whatever the slope I get of this graph, it should be equal to the square root of 2G. So at the end of the day, we're, we're seeing if Bernoulli's law fits the data. If it's linear, then, then Bernoulli's equation and Tor Torcelli's simplification do fit the data. But it also gives us something. It gives us an experimental measurement of G. So let's see how we get if we do something like that. So I'm going to put the square root of height, which is measured in the unit square root of meters. And that's not too hard. Equals square root. All my heights. There's my data for square roots. So what we'll do now is we'll make a graph. And making a graph is going to be unique to how Google Sheets work. There's a different way to do this in LibreOffice. There's a different way to do this in Microsoft Excel. Um, so you have to learn it for your program. This is the part that's really different between different spreadsheet programs. So if you're using LibreOffice, if you're using Microsoft Excel, um, making a graph can be a little different. I'm going to show you what Google Sheets is as of September 2020. Google Sheets is kind of notorious for just changing how it behaves at different times. So you'll have to get familiar with the software you're using. In general, I like to select a cell that's nowhere near my data because no spreadsheet program predicts what I want to do particularly well. So I want it to give me a no data when I tell it to start making a chart and I want to select the data. Um, so in Google Sheets, I've noticed in the past, it helps if I picked my Y axis first. And um, the Y axis in this case is going to be velocity. So I'm going to go to series and I'm going to choose and highlight all of my velocities. So I'm clicking and dragging, hit OK. Uh, and then I'm going to go add x-axis, and that's going to be my square root of uh, h. Click and drag all those guys. And now the data is in there, and it's just, uh, at this point, getting it graph the way it should be. So obviously, we don't want a column chart. We want a scatter plot. And I'm going to move me out of the way here. And I'm going to go now and get the, the chart set up so it's got all the things I want on it. So I'm going to first go to Customize, Chart and Axis Titles. And I want the Horizontal Axis Title. And this is going to be the square root of height. The unit for that is in square rooted meters. Um, and I want on my vertical axis velocity, which is in meters per second. All right, so I got that going for me. Now I need to get a trend line for this. So we can have the computer do a linear regression for us. Um, if we were doing this by hand, we would just do a best fit line and try to get about the same number of points above and below. So to do that, you go to series. You go to add trend line. And more options just keep showing up the more you click. And we want to add a label. So use equation. So that's our equation for this data, basically. Since we saw that the slope should be the square root of 2g, we can take that 5.29 that was our reported slope, set it equal to the square root of 2g, and solve. We get a g of about 14. So that's quite a bit of error, 43% uh, error, basically. Um, but given some of the, the issues with the wind blowing and um, was my driveway level and things like that, 
Uh, I'm not too upset about this. This was collected very, very quickly. So I'll leave it to you guys in conclusions to try to figure out what some controls we could do with, with equipment that was this on this par, but um, how could we make the lab a little better without making the lab too much more complicated?